here today with Ryan Williamson and Theo King from our power team and they specifically work on the nuclear sector. Um, they have just been to Nuclear 2023, which was held in County Halls in London. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Great. Um, Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the event? So Nuclear 2023 is probably the flagship event in the nuclear calendar from a networking perspective where members and delegates from the Nuclear Industry Association meet, network, exhibit, talk about new technologies and updates on the industry. So uh, it was a great event. Um, there was a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of clients uh, that we exhibit work with at the moment as well as companies uh, that, that are quite big in the industry so it's a, it's a great great to attend. Fantastic and um, Theo who, who attends I mean you, you talk about our clients etc but in terms of their job roles and functions? Yeah so it's a lot of sort of um, business leaders, CEOs, um, directors and sectors so a lot of it focuses on decommissioning and, and sort of nuclear new build which means that a lot of those heads of states or heads of departments um, are there along with people that talk about investment and insurance for this sector Obviously it's growing um, and in some situations there's a little bit sort of chicken and egg, what comes first, the investment or, or the proof the idea can work. So yeah, a lot of discussions around that as well. So lots Fantastic. Of so you yeah, talked a little bit about that. What, what were the other main themes um, of, of the sessions? Yeah, so it's quite, a, um, quite, a, quite an interesting roster of speakers actually. So mm -hmm. the event started off with an update on Hinkley Point C and, and, the, um, and the progress happening on the site there. It's obviously one of the biggest construction projects in the world right now, uh, so we could watch a really interesting video on the on the updates there, didn't we? Uh, there was talk about how we're going to move away from the reliance of fuel being provided by by Russia and its uh, and its affiliates, should we call them? Uh, yeah, there was also updates on SMRs, funding into the nuclear industry. So yeah, a lot of really interesting things to learn. Yeah, lot, lots of key speakers should be said for the best people in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, really knew their stuff. So I saw that there was um, one session specifically. Um, I think it was on the future skills, future skills task yeah. force. Um, yeah. How how was that? I mean, you know, how does that lead into you know our roles, obviously, in recruitment? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think the key thing to remember is there's a massive skills gap in general across engineering. But when you look at what the UK and what other countries want to do with nuclear and the way it's progressing. It's a massive requirement to have skilled engineers that are either coming back to the UK to work on these projects or upskilling future, gen future generations. So it's massive for us to be there. We obviously, it's great for us to get our name in the market, but it also gives us a great option to understand the needs and the requirements of, of each individual sector and where those key skills have to come from. So there is a massive precedent and, and you know, set with the oil and gas industry, which now seems to be the same thing they're trying to drag over into nuclear, which is saying that we need people in yeah. this industry. And one, I need them to be one trained. of the really interesting things they spoke about was it was that destination nuclear. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a skill. It's a it's an initiative that's been uh, initiated by mm -hmm. the uh, by the nuclear industry themselves. And the idea is is to look at people mid career who have got the transferable skills to move into the nuclear industry to try and yeah. plug that skills gap. It's, it's something that will help get to the numbers we need. One of the interesting stats I think is that about twenty five thousand people short. Yeah. in the nuclear industry at the moment to keep projects running to, to course. So um, it shows that you know, companies like us uh, are really going to be needed in the, you know, the near and the mid and the medium term. I think, I think just to add that, so there's you know, new stats coming yesterday, there needs to be 125,000 skilled engineers by 2040. And we're looking at those numbers not being anywhere close to that now. So the roadmap to get those massive and, and you know, undoubtedly recruitment agencies and, and companies like us are going to have to be a part of that. So yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, and especially when um, we've been talking about some of the issues that we've been talking around barriers of entry to, to the industry and we've written really? blogs on security clearance requirements and then you've got the whole area around um, geographical location and relocating yeah. people to potentially different parts of the country because it's very specific, site specific work, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's, that's really interesting for us and I think um, Good thing that you guys know what's going on yeah. so that we can better inform <laughs> Handy to be there. our okay. candidates and clients. The, the message from the senior people uh, at the event was very clear that they, they, they understand that they need, it needs to be an easier route into nuclear. I think the key thing that we need to see being sort of towards the coalface of this is that that message is synonymous for our companies that we work with. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great, great, great ideals and you know, great messages from these people. Uh, but the proof will be in the pudding as, as to you know what we see in the coming years as to whether or not things do get easier for people to enter the nuclear industry. Yeah, Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you for welcome. Cheers. Cheers.